Good day, everyone, and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have all you guys here. Now, listen, today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2019, and I got a story for you. First, I got to lay out the groundwork. Do you know that Europe is in huge trouble, all of Europe? Now, they've delayed this Brexit thing for six months, but, you know, that six-month clock is counting down, and... They couldn't come up with any sort of a solution in the last number of months. Months and months have went by. And now that they got six more months, they're just wasting their time. They're not really getting to work on anything because they haven't got anything and they're not going to get anything. Eventually, we're going to run into this end of this six-month wall. And they're going to have to have their hard Brexit anyway. And so we just got a delay. This is the second delay that the European Union's given them. This one's till October. I'm going to tell you, this could be rough. Now, Italy, Italy's not getting any better. Italy's in a terrible mess, you know, and they're financing their entire operation in Italy basically by selling bonds to the European Union, to the, to the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the ECB. They're selling their bonds, and that's what's keeping them going. They just bought $41 billion more. So all this is doing is getting the uh, ECB, the European Central Bank in deeper trouble because then, and France has lent Italy a tremendous amount of money. It's all intertwined, it's all interconnected, and the ultimate conclusion of all of this is these countries are going to break apart from the European Union eventually, and the euro is going to go down the toilet hole, right? And when that happens, these countries, now if we go back a couple years in time, do you remember Greece? They had a finance minister in Greece. He played a, played a practical joke. Greece was in a lot of trouble. A lot of people actually believed his practical joke. He said that Greece was going to use bitcoins as their national currency. But this was a while ago, back when bitcoin was a lot smaller than it is now. And so it made big waves. And they thought, they thought he was really serious, but he was actually just joking. The thing is, is in the future, this might not be a joke. Some of these countries like Italy that leave the European Union could actually have to either go back to their old currency, I think it's a lira, which would become almost valueless overnight, or they could actually start using cryptocurrency. In Venezuela, they already tried to switch over to a government-regulated cryptocurrency, but in fact, it doesn't really work. The only cr cryptocurrencies that actually work are what we call the real cryptocurrencies. And amongst them is the king of real cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. So we go all the way around in a circle and we come back where we started again. And it lands on Bitcoin's doorstep. Right? Now France is front running this whole thing. Let's take a look. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look what's going on. First off, this story to a lot of people, they pass it right over. And they wouldn't really notice it too much or notice the implications behind this. With Europe right now getting ready to go into an enormous crisis. In fact, Europe is going to be the epicenter of the worldwide financial crisis that's coming up. This is going to be a crisis in government. It's going to be, uh, and it's going to be mostly centered in Europe. And it's going to affect every country on earth negatively. It's called a recession. They're going to call it a recession. It's coming very soon, this recession. But Europe is going to be the epicenter of this recession. It's going to be where it hits the hardest. So France is encouraging the EU to adopt their cryptocurrency regulations. France, it says here, is going through a tough time right now with the recent fire breakout at the Notre Dame Cathedral. French finance minister Bruno Le Maire is reportedly persuading other members of the European Union to adopt cryptocurrency regulations in a similar sense to Francis. The new legislation in question is one where lawmakers in France have allowed cryptocurrency operators to run their operations with one caveat, that they apply for a certification that would allow authorities to determine the issuer of a new token. So basically what they want to do is they want to stop all these crazy token sales, you know, where these guys come up with all these new different tokens all connected to Ethereum. Most of them are Ethereum-based. And, and the thing is, is these, they're basically scams. 
So basically what they're saying is, is the authorities are going to give you certification with one caveat, that the authorities are going to check into the issuers of these new tokens. You know, if, if you come up with a, uh, a, a coin sale, uh, what do they call that, an ICO, uh, a coin sale. If they come up with a big coin sale and some new idea or something and they're just really trying to get money, you know, they're going to crack down on that. It says, or the creators of an, of an exchange. So if they're going to create a new exchange, they're going to have to be checked out by the government. It says, furthermore, they will be able to check business plans. So they're going to, they're going to basically, this is making it all legit. This is legitimizing the cryptocurrencies. Uh, and France is starting it, and they're suggesting that these other members of the European Union adopt the same cryptocurrency regulations. So it's going to be a regulated industry. It says, many countries in the EU are reviewing blockchain and digital asset adoption to boost their economies, including Germany and Italy. You see where all this is going, guys? Bitcoin is preparing itself right now for a huge expansion, I believe, in the very near future. It's been growing the whole time it's been down from $20,000. It's been growing. And people very well know that it could easily go back up to $20,000 again. I remember when it was up to 1100 bucks and it fell off. And people were saying, oh, it's going to die. It's going to die initially, you know, for a while. And then when it started to creep back up again, like it's doing now, you know, then what they did was then they started saying it'll never get back up to $1,100 again. Oh, yes, but they'd say, we know it's, the price is going to go back up. We think it might go back up to four or 500 but it'll never get back up to $1,150 ever again. Okay? That's what they said. It's the same sort of idea now. It's just the numbers are different. But it's following the same principles. And so, in this next move upwards, they thought it would never get back up to 1100 bucks. Well, it went up to 20000 in this next move upwards, how high could it go? Gosh only knows. It could go so high it actually starts to take out the dollar and these other fiat currencies. Because that's its tendency. The tendency is, when people buy cryptocurrency, that that money that they purchase the cryptocurrency goes right through the cryptocurrency. And when it goes through the crypto, what I mean by goes through it, it purchases it, and then it makes its way back into the general economy, and it speeds up the velocity of money tremendously. Because the cryptocurrency they're buying, most of the people are buying it to HODL it, or HODL it. Of course, all you guys know what that means. It means it doesn't move. It means it goes into your wallet, and that's where it stays, because you bought it as an investment, right? Where the dollar is completely different. When the dollar, uh, the dollar is, is, is purchased to buy the Bitcoin with, it goes back right through the Bitcoin into the general economy where it speeds up. Because that dollar was probably taken out of somebody's bank account where it wasn't moving. Now it's moving into the general economy. So Bitcoin has the effect of actually speeding up the economy. It makes money spend faster. It speeds up the velocity of money. And this encourages inflation in the dollar but not in Bitcoin this encourages the exact opposite in Bitcoin so Bitcoin is the exact opposite of the dollar they oppose one another and so when we see what's happening happen we, we see the expansion of these cryptocurrencies if it gets too large if it starts to get up over into the trillions of dollars where it could go three four five trillion trillion not billion trillion dollars then what it'll start doing is it'll actually start having having a profound effect upon the fiat currencies to speed up their velocity and that's when you're going to see when the velocity of money increases in the fiat currencies that's when you're going to see people start to spend them faster and that's when you're going to see people start to lose confidence in them which leads us toward hyperinflation so it depends on how big Bitcoin gets. 
probably once Bitcoin goes past two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, it's going to actually start to have this snowballing effect on the other fiat currencies, and they they'll start to money will start to pour into the cryptocurrencies. This is a situation. We are in uncharted territory right now with this new type of currency. And and also the effects that are going to happen, the ramifications. So, uh, it also says regulation. Lawmakers have said that they are going to also be allowing the $2 trillion life insurance market to invest in non-securities without the limitation of only permitting investments of up to 10% of a company's funds. French Digital Economy Minister Morin, Morin uh, I can't pronounce his last name, has said that he wishes for France to become a champion when it comes to blockchain. It says it seems that you need to look no further than France in terms of what will help boost the adoption rate of cryptocurrency. Several insurance companies in France are soon going to be able to include crypto in their life insurance contracts. This is all thanks to a vote by France's National Assembly. It says, as we reported yesterday, though, this was not an easy process. Policymakers and the different firms worked hard, hand in hand for more than a year to make this rule change a reality. Wow, this is big, you know. This is big for cryptocurrency. Today, we got Bitcoin prices moving up. One of these times, the price is going to start to move up and the train's going to leave the station. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this report and we'll catch you again very, very soon. Bye-bye, guys.